We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we've got a question for long, from longtime fan of the show, Emmett O'Brien. The question, I don't always get to listen to the podcast right away. I just listen to the podcasts on game weight and competition, and you asked for more philosophical questions, so here goes. Getting and keeping a group active and regular is probably the problem that gamers face. There are so many things that can trump game night. Often the main causes are important responsibilities like childcare, work, and relationships. So are there tricks you've used to mitigate these factors? Do you use any techniques to build excitement around game night so that people want to show up more? Assuming that not all players are required, do you think a larger group has more of these problems or fewer? I weirdly get the feeling that when one person doesn't show up, it seems to give license to others not to show. And have mm. you seen this happen? Obviously, this is a really tough problem to crack, and I don't expect a solution, but any sage advice is appreciated. Wow, thanks so much for the detailed question, Emmett. Um, Emmett's one of the people I miss seeing at cons. We usually run into him a couple times a year. Um, as I think everyone is aware, we don't always get to people's questions as soon as we get them, right? Uh, we have a backlog of questions. I actually have an Excel file with a, a surprisingly large number of questions in it. And the order we go in has a lot to do with what we've talked about recently, what games we've been playing, what other questions we have, and honestly, what we feel like talking about at the time. Due to this, we actually got this question before any of us had ever heard of COVID-19. So when Emmett wrote us, he was talking about the difficulty of getting a game group together without the added complexity of not being able to game in person. I thought it would be interesting to talk about this particular question now, a year into quarantine for most of us, due to the complexities that have been added due to the quarantine, the lockdowns, and not being able to play face-to-face, -face, or even when you do play face-to-face, -face, having to wear masks or be so far apart. Now, I do still want to talk about your regular game group on an average year and an average game night, because I do believe we will get back there at some point, but I also want to talk to you about what you can do now that we're all stuck gaming from our own homes. So many people working on so many solutions to this, we almost certainly can't name them all. So as always, drop us a line if you've got some other winning solutions to this real world problem with or without pandemic. Yeah, we're always looking, we, we can't cover it all, but hopefully we do have some sage advice. I think Emmett worded it for Emmett tonight. So, all right, we're gonna start off with some role playing. We're gonna all imagine that things are normal and that getting together for a game night just means heading over to your friend's place or the local game store, possibly having some food together and something you can do regularly, uh, whether that's at a cafe or a pub at your own home or at a friend's place. So right now we're imagining everything's normal. Everything's uh, 19 or 2019 <laughs> in, the, in the house tonight. So what I want to do is start with that. So we're pretending there, there, there's no pandemic right now. It's, it's regular. You get together every Friday or you get together on weekends. So Emmett's got a bunch of different things in this question. So he's got a bunch of different parts to his question. It's, it's not just one overall question, but different segments. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to sections just to make sure we cover everything that Emmett's asking. So I want to start with this. So this is to quote Emmett. There are so many things that can trump game night. Often the main causes are important responsibilities like childcare, work, and relationships. So what I want to point out here is what he notes that they are important responsibilities. I, there are a number of very valid reasons to, for someone to cancel or for you to cancel or for someone to skip out on game night. Because most importantly, I think everyone needs to realize, and some people tend to forget this, they take their hobby very seriously. Like here we are, I, I like I make a living for it, from it, and I still have to get it stuck in my head that this is, it's a game. It's, it's meant to be a pastime. It's meant to be fun. This is not a job. Well, for most people, um, this is not, not, it, it's just something you do to have fun. It's something that should be giving you spoons. It's something that should be enjoyable. It should be something that's part of your self care. It should be a way to pass time and needs to be thought of that way. It needs to be thought of as a hobby, as a fun leisure activity, not as a burden or something you have to do. And because of that, Almost every excuse is a valid excuse. There are going to be very few reasons to cancel on a game night that's not valid. We're all adults. We all have responsibilities, whether that's kids or not, jobs, 
uh, needing to take out the garbage, do the laundry, whatever. Yes, you may probably can reschedule that for a better night or whatever, and there are workarounds, but there's just, there's things we have to do. There are, there are obligations we have that are way more important than getting together with your friends and doing a leisure activity. Yeah, and I think a lot of this has to do with the first part of, uh, of or part of his first sentence there, and that is game night. Mm-hmm. And what those words mean uh, can really shape a lot of how people are taking, how seriously people are taking your event. Is it a friendly open thing? Is it an open post on Facebook or Twitter that invites people by one night of the week? Um, if you're looking for a, great, uh, a regular group, it should be a regularly pre-scheduled event yeah. that all parties have agreed to. Um, and, and taking it seriously from a scheduling point of view helps other people take it seriously as an attending point of view. Yep. So that leads me to my next point that once you have scheduled a game night, once you have sat down and you made a game group and it is something regular, people do also have to realize this is an obligation. So this is the opposite side. While I'm saying pretty much any excuse is valid, you should be doing everything you can to stick to that obligation. Like I like to think of it as you're part of a sports team, right? Your team gets together for practice on Wednesdays and you play the game on Saturday night. If you don't show up, you're letting down the entire team. I feel game groups should feel the same way or as important as that. If you don't make it to game night, there is a good chance you're letting people down. Now, especially if you have a small group, if you're looking at like an RPG group of five players who get together to play D&D and it's the kind of campaign where if one player is missing, you can't play, that's an even stronger obligation. Or if you're playing Gloomhaven with a group of four players and you need the same group of four players to continue your campaign if one of them can't make it, it's an obligation. Now, some of that stems from my personal, uh, I don't know, vengeance is the wrong word, but hatred of the fact that places of work and sometimes other family members and mainly non-gamers don't tend to think of gaming this way where you know bob gets to have thursday nights off and never has to work afternoons because he plays baseball but i can't have saturdays off because i run events at the local game store where to me they're at the same level they're they're both obligations that i've signed up where i am letting down other people if i can't show up so that's why i like to bring in the sports analogy because a lot of other people it seems like people give leeway to people who play sports whereas i think playing a game is just as important but at the same time even pros have to miss out on games sometimes yes so again there are reasons that you can't make it right uh there are factors that are completely legitimate even if you have established a regular Mm -hmm. game group that everyone has agreed to yeah i think the important thing is take it seriously realize it's an obligation but also realize it's an obligation to do a leisure activity so there's a fine balance there like saying you can't make it because you didn't do laundry on monday and you forgot is is pretty lame right like just make sure you do your laundry on non-game night like make make arrangements but then if your kid has parent-teacher interviews that night well come on of course go to parent-teacher interviews so the next thing Emmett mentions are is, are there tricks you've used to mitigate these factors so to not have people cancel? So while you can't avoid necessary absences or emergencies, there are some things I've found over the years running multiple events. I've been running events in the Windsor area. For anyone who doesn't know my bona fides, I've been running events in Windsor since 2002. Um, events with attendance going anywhere from three to 75 people, um, as well as assisting, helping out with cons and things like that and volunteering at cons. So I'm definitely used to having regular game nights. Now, in addition to those public plays, I have various game groups that have been coming to my house for years, uh, whether that's our RPG groups or just a regular board game group that gets together every week. So just that's where my background's coming from. And these are things I've found you can do. And the one Sean already mentioned a couple of times here is consistency, right? Uh, A regular time at a regular place with a regular schedule that everyone is well aware of. I think that is probably the number one recommendation. It shouldn't be, we get together sometime each week to play, or we get together Saturday if we can. It should be, we get together Saturday night starting at six and we play until at least 11. And everyone knows that. And everyone knows that Saturday at six is game night. Your family knows, everyone else knows. You can let your work know. You tell your friends. I'm, I'm busy that night. Sorry, that's what I do on Saturday nights or whatever night I said it was earlier. I might've forgot what night I said. You never want to be wishy-washy. 
you'll never play. You'll never actually get the group together if it's wishy-washy. Heck, we have this problem now. We've been trying to do games with a couple of our Patreon patrons. And we keep saying, yeah, yeah, we should get together with them. And then we write them, hey, do you want to get together? Yeah, let's get together. But we never go, you know what? This Saturday at nine, we're going to play. When we do that, we get together and we play. And it works. Now, if we set it up as a regular schedule and we go, maybe this is what we need to do, is go the first Sunday of every month is when we do it then maybe we'd be a little more consistent as it is. It's like, okay, we're going to do it on Sundays and we play more often now that we say we do it on Sundays and we have a set time. We're going to play Sundays at nine, but it's not every Sunday. So then you get the, Oh, I thought we weren't playing this week. And I, maybe we are playing next week. And now, Oh, it's this Saturday. I thought it, you have all those problems. So you want a regular schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's lots of ways to do that. Now, when you, once you have a regular schedule, it's important to, you know, put it in someone's calendar, whether it's in your Zoom calendar or in your Outlook or, or in your Google calendar on your phone. Mm -hmm. Put it in, get it in everyone's calendar so there's a reminder. So that when they look at their calendar, they don't say, oh, yeah, sure, Bob, I'm free to go out for drinks on Saturday. When they should know that every Saturday from 4 till 8, mm -hmm. you play do Whatever. Uh, yep. yeah. <laughs> totally fair. See, it's definitely harder. Like when it's weekly, it's easy. It's easy to remember when it's every Friday. Where it's hard is when it's every other month or it's every third week or it's the fourth Friday. And that's that's the problem we had here in Windsor with the local gaming events is it was set up. So it was at one game store the first Saturday of the month, a different game store the second Saturday of the month, a different game store the third Saturday of the month and at a cafe on the fourth Saturday of the month. But then when there was that sixth, fifth Saturday, everyone was confused because they wanted to go back to the first rotation and it was always a mess and I, I spent so much time over communicating it um which does lead to using tools to give people reminders as sean said put it in a calendar there's also like things like facebook events right nowadays people are kind of wishy-washy on facebook a lot of people have left it a lot of people still like it it's still to me one of the best places who organize locals, um, especially to get new locals out to events. But if you're looking at your regular game group, you might want to use something different. Um, there's also Meetup as another example for public events. Although or, Meetup has had some pricing issues and things, so I'm not sure. If yeah, they are... I don't. They're still around because I yeah. keep getting invited to stuff, which <laughs> I'm like, um, there's a pandemic. What are you trying to invite me to go play Robotech in Detroit for? <laughs> Maybe they're still getting together. I don't know. But I, I think there's there should be something, right? Now, another thing that I think you need to do to increase your odds of people setting up is setting the expectations. So in addition to the date and the time, oh, that's before I get to that, where is very important. I kind of alluded to this. It was at one game store and then the other game store and then the cafe that confuses people, right? So it's really easy if it's at your place every Monday, but if it rotates, make sure everyone knows that schedule, that it's at my place the first Saturday of the month, it's at Sean's place the second Saturday of the month, and it's at Kevin's place the third Saturday of the month, and we rotate just to share the responsibility of playing host, which is a great way to do things, actually. And it's actually a great way so that one person doesn't have all the burden and one person who doesn't get burnt out. So that's actually another way you can mitigate that is by rotating the responsibilities. But what those responsibilities are need to be set, right? You need to pre-plan. You need to have expectations. Who's bringing the games? Do you just, when you're at Sean's place, you play Sean's games, or at Mo's place, you play Mo's games, when you're at Kevin's place, you play whatever game he just won from whatever draw he entered? Like, how many games are you going to get played? Like, do you show up, and during game night, we're going to play three games. We're going to play a filler and two medium-weight games. Or you're going to play a big, epic Twilight Imperium-style game. Are you going to play light games? Is there going to be a filler to start? Is it going to be one group playing one game or 12 different groups and free for all everyone plays what they want like all of that and all of these are valid i'm not saying one way is better the important part is to sit down and decide this ahead of time what is your plan for each each session and does this change is it the same every week is it just open gaming free for all or is it we always start off with a light fit light game that's less than 50 minutes to get everyone talking and then we play a one and a half one to a two hour game and then we bring out the euro game that takes two hours and it's like that every week or is it just hey who brought what this week and and knowing that can actually make a huge difference to people who are or maybe on the edge of showing up because mm -hmm. maybe they have something at 10 o'clock and they could be there from eight till 10, but they really need to run at 10 because their mm -hmm. babysitter is leaving. And if they know you're getting into Twilight Imperium, they're yeah. just going to skip out. But if they know they can get a game or two in before they leave, they're more likely to show up. And I think we'll get into later how, you know, showing up at all and not showing up 
you know, changes the uh, the situation and the dynamics. But yes, that can make a big difference if they know in advance whether or not there there's going to be some shorter games or if it's mm-hmm. going to be a, a big slog. Right. And then also knowing um, how many people are showing up like what like what what is the expectation is it is it one game group right is it you and your your four friends who get together on mondays is going to be a very different from if it's not right so again if it's just your home group it doesn't really apply but if you're doing a public event people need to know if there's going to be other people there to play with where that's most important is is um I, I don't want loner to be the the bad word here like as in a poor person but like the single person showing up to play games are they going to be able to find a table to sit down and play with right like whereas if you go with a group of friends you can play with each other but like if you're the the person looking for people to play with are there going to be people there to play with or are you going to show up and there's the same group of five people who always play the same game in the corner playing that game and you're sitting there going oh, what do I want to play and again that's something that should be talked about ahead of time and is going to um help mitigate right because if that single person shows up and there's nothing from the play you won't expect them to come back the next week no absolutely not and Uh, then other things is make sure there's some way for people to let you know to cancel that they're going to cancel because that'll mitigate it right you don't want to be there on game night wondering who's going to show up you should know before showing up to game night who's going to be there now again a big public event with 30 40 people this isn't as important but I don't want to find out Monday night when I've got my DM screen set up and my miniatures out and I've already drawn my map, the two of my players aren't going to show up. Right. So there ha- should be a way you need to provide a way for people to do that. And that should be part of your, um, your, your table rules, right. Your unwritten written or unwritten could go either way rules or your social contract of what do you do when you're going to cancel and having that in place again, ahead of time can mitigate the fact that people well, if it doesn't mitigate the fact that people do or don't cancel, it'll at least mitigate the effect of people yep. canceling. Uh, and again, you know, I've got a tool for, for uh, or, or issues recently for setting up the game group in the first place. So in my online play of masks, I'm actually taking in players from all over the place, uh, all mm-hmm. different time zones. Uh, one of our party is in GMT, so five hours off. Wow. Uh, and, and finding a group of players who were going to be able to, to connect at a certain regular time was tough. Uh, but we found when to meet that's when the number two meet.com, which is a free site where a group can set up a, a little schedule planner and everyone can fill in their availability. Um, and then it just shows up for everybody and you can see, Oh, well, this person, these people are available this time. Oh, well, you know, out of the, the six people who were, tr- were trying to get together, we found four people and these two nights a week that mm-hmm. every, all of those are available. So unfortunately, those other two people probably aren't going to be able to join our group, but we've got a solid gaming group of four people who can now meet every two weeks. Nice. Um, and so it was a great way to just to, you know, not be asking questions after questions after mm-hmm. questions. It was just, look, go to this calendar, fill in when you're available, and we're going to pick the maximum party size that I'm, you know, the, the DM is available to to run at. Yep. Um, yeah there's the, that one meme i love with all the people that are like who are we they're like board gamers what do we do we play games when do we play monday no wait <laughs> i'm not free monday no tuesday i, I can't play saturday and yeah. you never get the group together right yeah that is such a common thing and has been for years but there are a lot of tools out there i remember yeah. um evil john who i don't think is in the chat room tonight had sent me something it was like xi.com or something yeah but there's, I don't a, there's a bunch of them and this this one was just a quick little free that sounds thing. free and easier and, than and this it was other literally one. just drag and you know drag up and down over the hours of each day wow. you're available for yeah. the next month and and you know we built a party out of that we we, we knew not nice. everyone was going to meet so we grabbed some extra people and and mm-hmm. found it all out and it worked uh fantastic So that's something worth adding in here. I know we're pretending the world's all fine, but people have been doing online gaming for a long time, but that is something else that needs to be communicated when communicating time and place. Remember to include time zones. (laughs) That is, that has become a very important thing nowadays that people don't always think of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Do you have any other tips or tricks you can think of to mitigate people Uh, not attending or not getting the notice? Open communication is is the biggest thing. Open communication and scheduling. Yeah, if you can make sure everyone is aware and on board, agreed in advance, uh, it just goes so much further. 
All right, moving on to Emmett's next section of his, his, his nice long question for us. Do you use any techniques to build excitement around game night so that people want to show up more? Um, my number one first thing I thought of that popped in my head right away is theme your game nights. Um, we have a lot more success. This is me thinking about public play events in Windsor, Ontario. Having a theme to each event, whether that's one specific game, so it's, we are going to demo this. We are going to be showcasing this game. We're going to have multiple copies of the game. If you want to learn how to play this game, show up tonight. Plus, bring whatever you want. We also have open gaming. You can play whatever you want. You can play our demo copies. You can do whatever you want to do. But we're going to have an expert here showing off this game, right? So that's one way to theme it. We've also had the, ah, it's pirate night. And everyone brings pirate games. When we've done that, without asking anyone, we had people show up in cosplay. That's when I knew that worked. When we had people show up dressed as pirates, I'm like, okay, that one, that was awesome. We did superhero nights. We did racing nights. We did sports nights. We did medieval nights and so on. Just something to add just a little bit more fun to the game. Plus, it also helps relieve some of that analysis paralysis of what should we play, right? It, it limits your focus because that is another problem with game nights that, that I kind of mentioned with the pre-planning, set the expectations. What are you going to play? Knowing what kinds of games are going to be there is a big part of it. And knowing that you're going to be playing pirate games tonight. So we're going to have some Libertalia and some Black Fleet and I don't know pirate games. What's the Forgotten Waters is the hot run right now. Everyone's going nuts for that game. The latest Coded Chronicles game, right? That's what we're going to show off this night. So I think themes are a great way to want people to show up, right? So it's not just, it's open gaming. You're not just showing up going, oh, I'm showing up to play games. I don't know what games yet. We'll see what games are there. It's no, no, I'm going to pirate night. We're going to go play some pirate games or I'm going to fantasy night. I'm going to be a knight tonight. And you know what? This, is, this matters just as much with an RPG group as it does with a board game group. Mm. The difference being with an RPG group, it is on essentially the DM or the party, depending on the, on the style of play, if you're playing a more narrative game, to keep the game running. If you are going to be playing, you know, Dungeons and Dragons from 8 p.m. until midnight, you want to play Dungeons and Dragons for at least three and a half hours. Yes. You don't want to play Dungeons and Dragons for an hour and a half and chat and do this and that mm -hmm. and talk about your week, the rest of it. I, as a, because that's going to get boring. You you want people to want to come because they know there is going to be the adventure. Mm -hmm. They are going to get what they are going for, which, you know, whether it's a board game or, you know, a, a, a type of board game, or if it's an RPG, you want to keep them engaged for the time you have scheduled. Or maybe you're scheduling the wrong amount of time. You know, yeah. that could be the problem as well. Maybe you're scheduling a four-hour session, but as a GM, you really aren't prepping four hours of gameplay. You've really only got about two hours of content, mm -hmm. and the players are, are kind of roaming and, and, and hemming and hawing a lot. Well, tighten that up. Make it a two-hour session or prep for four, whichever yeah. you're capable of. That's, that's fine, but make sure it works for everybody because if people aren't doing what you they, they want, they're going to be less likely to show up. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to miss this week. You know, that's okay. We didn't do all that much last week. No one will mind. So kind of to build on that, if you are having a problem where you're spending half your game night socializing instead of gaming, maybe you should plan a different type of event, right? Make, make your night more than just gaming. Make it more of a social experience, right? Schedule it so that you are socializing. So you're socializing, but but before or after gaming. So it's separated. And everyone knows this, right? It's it's we are getting together to play D D from six till ten, but we know from six till seven, we're gonna we're gonna shoot the the bull. We're we're gonna we're gonna chit chat and talk about what we've been doing and what who visited their your Animal Crossing Island and what you watched on Netflix last week. And we're gonna sit down and maybe maybe we'll have some snacks and some food or some drinks before or again after. Right? We're gonna we're gonna play D and D. We're playing from six till nine. I want everyone focused. We're gonna focus on the game, but right at nine o'clock or as close to it as we can. We're gonna call it and then we're gonna decompress. We're gonna sit back. Now D and D is probably a bad example in that, but this is especially important for any RPGs with bleed. Right? Any games where you are gonna get deeply emotionally involved, you want that cool down time and that return to normality at the end of the game. So that cool down at the end. Plus, try to keep the gaming more like yes you want to be focused on the games but it is a social experience right you are playing with friends so things like snacks food drinks are all part of the 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 allure of it now again expectations 
Is the host providing all of this? Do you bring your own? Are you ordering in? All of this should be determined ahead of time. You're going to the local game store. Is there a place on site to buy food? Can you order in pizza? All this should be determined ahead of time and you should know what exactly you're doing. But one of the ways to keep people involved is to reinforce that social aspect, right? So another example that I would love to do if I could afford it is before every game session, get together with my group and go for dinner or after. Either way, either I want to go sit at a restaurant, have a pint of beer, sit and eat some pizza and talk about what happened last week and what we're going to do this week. Or if it's a board game, start talking about the game like, hey, we're going to be playing Twilight Imperium tonight. It won this award and here's the kind of gameplay. I'm not going to teach you to play here, but here's here's how the game works. Or this is where we decide what to play. Here's the seven games I was thinking of playing tonight. What has you guys excited? What would you like to play? Or again, the op do it as the opposite. You, you sit down, you have a great RPG session, then you all go to dinner, you're all sit together, and you're like, all right, what worked? What was your favorite part? What did well? All right, what didn't you like? What'd you think of this NPC? Oh, remember when you made this rule and that wasn't the rules and I came up with this ruling? What'd you think of that rule? I think that's a way to get people more excited about game night because it's a little bit, it's going to get the social people in your group more excited, right? The people who are out there to hang out with friends more than they are to play games are going to then enjoy playing the games even more because they're going to get that social feed. Yeah. And, and uh, that's a great uh, time. If you're doing RPGs, uh, take on, you do your, your wishes and stars or your roses mm -hmm. and thorns, do some of those, those, those clean up after event uh, moments, you know, have a, have a piece of paper or, your, or a note app on your phone to keep track of what people are saying, but uh, you know, take it away from the table and, and get people talking and you mm -hmm. might actually get a, a better feedback for your wishes and stars and things uh, in that setting rather than everyone is still kind of hyped up after that game and, or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever happened during the game and aren't thinking about the whole event they're thinking about that last encounter that really kind mm -hmm. of you know did whatever now another tip i have to help build excitement is to extend the game night past game night right so what do you do during the week to get people excited uh use online tools uh if you've got uh, a discord or a facebook group or even just emails between your friends if you've got a, an email news list or a, an ongoing chat you know like a chat with your 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 whole game group in there the hey remember when we played this oh remember when dave pulled that awesome move off and totally messed over deanna at the end of the game and hey what do you guys want to play next week or oh i just got a copy of white star i'm really looking forward to playing this what do you guys think you want to try some white star on the weekend right just keeping the buzz and the excitement about game night going during the week or weeks or months depending on what your thing is again for some reason i default in my head to a weekly game night but this isn't necessarily about a weekly game night whether it's two weeks or a month between and actually if you do have a month between i think this is even more important to try to keep that buzz and excitement going. Absolutely. And, and for me, um, Discord has been an invaluable tool for this sort of thing. Uh, again, for, for, our, for our masks game, we have a dedicated jabber channel, just, just garbage where people can chat. And all throughout the week, even though we only game twi two nights a week for four hours a session, people are always in that channel chatting and 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 you know they get home from work and you know hey how was everyone's night going you know whatever mm -hmm. uh and keeping that content going um and then we even have a, a separate channel we actually have a, a an out of chat out of character channel for game nights so that people can still chat during right. game night but not interrupt the game there's a chance there's a separate channel for rp and there's a separate channel for out of character conversations um, and, and keeping that information flow and that friendliness and that banter between players mm. and people uh, is really important to keep the strength of the group and the, the strength of the group bond. And again, that group bond is what's going to help people to keep coming back. So next up, uh, he was asking, assuming that not all players are required, do you think a larger group has more of these problems or fewer. All right. In general, the larger the group, the less impact one or more players canceling is going to affect the entire group. And in general, I honestly think the bigger the group, the better, if you have the space for it, right? Like you don't necessarily want a huge group for your game room. Uh, the more 
people, the more chance everyone not only has someone to play with, right, but can find someone they want to play with, which is another issue that kind of comes up when you get big groups of players together. And those players can find a game they can agree on playing, right? Um, unless you're limited by space, right? And, and again, role-playing groups, this is difficult. There, there's a fine line from making your group big enough so that if a couple people cancel, it's good enough to play, to you have to be able to host it when everyone shows up. And that can really ruin a game, right? I, I remember running a Warhammer game with eight players because on average, three canceled. And I was so used to three canceling that we usually played with five. Well, one week, all eight showed up and I'm like, oh my God, that was not a good session. Like there's just, there's so much crunch in that game and passing the dice around. It was like, we should have played something else. But then looking at just a generic game group, right? So for so board game group or whatever, the problem you're going to have with large groups is other problems, right? Not, not game night cancellation problems. The problems you're going to run into are different player personalities, competitiveness levels, um, issues of social um social issues we'll just say uh if there's alcohol involved that one or two gamers that have a few too many right like all of this are game group problems that the bigger the group the more you're going to see none of this though has an impact on maintaining a regular game night and these are topics we've covered in other podcasts and i suggest you listen to those to really get the details on how to deal with player problems but as far as i'm concerned when you're trying to get a steady game group you want as big as possible for something public, right? If you're playing at a local store, uh, a, a cafe, a pub, like up to their capacity, obviously. For a personal game group, that's your call. How many people can you host in your basement? I am perfectly happy with 12 people showing up as long as they're perfectly cool with splitting into two groups and playing two games at six. Now, where I have a problem is when we get to eight players and they all insist we have to play a game together. I'm not a big fan of most of the big party games, but I set that expectation. I'm like, the only time I do that is New Year's. I'll, I'll put up with, um, we have a couple friends who always show up for New Year's. I always want to start the event with playing something together. I'm like, all right, fine. We'll play a couple rounds of code names or camel up or something. And yeah, there you go, Scott. We played our game together. Now we're going to split up. All right. I'm going to play some three and four player games and actually have some more fun and not just sit, wait for everyone else to do something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to to be prepared, like Mo said with that Warhammer game, you know, what are you going to do if everybody shows up? Yeah. The last thing you want is the people getting the idea that it's better if not everyone shows up yeah, and deciding that, oh, it's just not a big thing, right? I know there's going to be six other people there, so if I don't show up, it won't hurt anything, and I can, I can make plans on that night if someone asks, because mm. they've been there that one night when everybody showed up, and it was a disaster. So if you've got 12 people in your group, make sure that if 12 people show up, 12 people have fun. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, well, next up, uh, he says, I weirdly get the feeling that when one person doesn't show up, it seems to give license to others to not show. Have you seen this happen? Uh, this is definitely a thing, but it's not a good thing. This is, this is usually a good sign that there's something not quite right in your game group whatever that happens to be when this happens it often means there are people in the group who are only showing up due to a sense of obligation that they signed up so they're going to come and they're not coming for the joy of playing with others seeing someone else cancel gives them an out right so like oh i can cancel guilt-free because well sean's not going to come so now i can say i'm not going to come Whew, i don't have to go now you tend to see this when people have found something else they'd rather do um Whatever that happens to be, uh, that could be anything. It could be a TV series they want to watch, a new hobby they've gotten into, another group they want to hang out with, uh, they've become infatuated with another person, they've got a date, whatever. Um, there's something else they want to do other than game. One other issue you can run into, and this one's a little bit a sticky one, is introverts. Uh, people who just aren't always comfortable in groups, and they really they may really love going to your gaming session, but they have to force themselves to do it because groups of people are problematic. Uh, yeah. And that's something that you need to sort of work with outside of the group, but do be aware because they're probably the person who is going to take that opportunity to check out. If, yeah. if they see that opportunity, they will because, you know, it uses up a lot of spoons to go to those events and they have fun, but it's really draining at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and being one of those people myself, <laughs> I can speak from experience if if there's an out, it may well get taken. Yeah. 
So the, the issue here, well, I'm not issue, but the hard part here is dealing with it, right? What, what do you do when you notice that every time someone cancels, Sean also cancels, you're like, oh, I, the, the main thing is find out if they still want to be part of the group. And there's the thing with Sean. And we have a, a friend, Steve, I'm not going to say a last name, who I think is in the same boat because Steve has missed more sessions than anyone else in any of my game groups ever. And after he misses about four and every time about four go by, I get a hold of Steve. I'm like, Steve, do you still want to be part of the group, right? Do you still want to play? Are you still interested? Do you still want to be on the invite list? And every time she's like, oh yeah, I love it. I can't believe it. Oh man, I had so much fun the last time we played. I'm looking forward to the next time we played. It'll be great. And then Steve cancels again. So ask that question, right? Like, hey, like, like for all you know, maybe something's going on you don't know about, right? Like it may not have anything to do with your game group, especially right now with what's going on in the world, whether that's the pandemic or unrest or social justice or the millions of things going on uh, in 2021, maybe the person just can't. And that is a valid excuse. So the hard part is that whole, you know, put on your adult pants. You know, I, I, I hate kind of getting sick of that term. You hear it all the time. Put on, put on, put on the pants and ask the question, right? Like, Hey, I noticed you've been canceling. Right, do you actually want to be part of this game group? Like, we don't mind if you have other things you'd rather do on Saturday nights. That's fine. Is Saturday night a problem? Maybe we can find another night, right? Like it's having to have that conversation again. It's not easy to do. Um, just see if you can do it. See if there's something wrong, right? Like um, you want to try to uh, and be ready to change right like do what you can to make the experience more fun for those people including many of the tips we already talked about maybe it's just boring maybe we don't have a regular schedule maybe i keep forgetting that it's on this week because one week one time it's on saturday and then it's on thursday and then it's on saturday again what date do we play it could be any of those problems as well yeah and one other thing to be important is don't assume someone will be back if they just miss one night even if they have a good reason make just check in just be personable, check in, see if they're coming back, see if they don't be confrontational, but you're trying to encourage people to come back. And the fact that you're wanted in a group can help mm -hmm. people want to return. Um, yeah. if, if everyone's just like, Oh yeah, yeah, they missed it, whatever. And, and, and that's the end of it. That doesn't make me feel like I'm an important part of that group. But if one or two people reach out and say, Hey, is everything okay? You weren't here on Monday. Are you coming next Monday? All of a sudden, now I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. well, okay, maybe maybe there is a good reason for me to come back. Maybe maybe it is more important that I'm there than I was thinking it was. I will go back. All right. Do we have anything else for Emmett on a, on a regular game night? Can you think of anything else, any tips we can give him for if the world was a normal place and we could get be getting together tomorrow to game? What could you do to make sure people showed up? I really, it comes down to communication and planning and, yeah. and, and, and planning, planning the communication Expectations. and communicating the planning. Um, yeah. that, that's it. Yeah. Keep things, try to keep things interesting, right? Mix it up. Uh, make sure someone's not doing all the work. That was something we didn't have in the notes that came up kind of in the middle of the discussion there that I think is important. Um, make sure like share the hosting abilities, try to try to share the love. If, if one person's doing all the work, see what you can do to help out. Try to try to make sure no one gets burnt out. That's, that's one thing. Don't always play the same game. Even if you love Catan and play Catan all the time, make a Catan group, do that and go play Catan with your Catan group. And that's it. Try to keep it together. So since we pretty much covered the things Emmett brought up explicitly, what I want to do now is look at advice for maintaining a game group in tough times, uh, where we are now in the middle of a global pandemic and potentially any other tough times like a winter snow in, or I, I, I'm trying to think of other things that uh, this is kind of, I, everyone's used this term too much this year, I'm paralleled, but I can't really think of another example, but you know, when, when the bombs drop and we're living well, in I bunkers. Mean, different, di different, different spaces. I mean, right now, the fact that I'm playing on discord has more to do with the, the necessary group of people I'm trying to find, uh, to bring together than yeah. the pandemic. Um, these people don't live near me. They w have never lived near me. Uh, I've, I've met them online and this has always been an online thing. Yeah. It couldn't happen. Uh, it, or it would happen exactly the same in 2019 as it does in 2021. Yeah, that's true. For your, your particular group, you'd be gaming online with these people either way. Exactly. So it, it doesn't, there's a lot of online uh, action that can happen and you can find a wider range of people, uh, if you don't, uh, limit it to in-person gaming.
yeah very true that that has been a godsend to many people gaming online for being able to um game with new people to meet new people to play in safer spaces because that's not something you can guarantee at a public play event necessarily hopefully the venue is doing something to protect their 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 patrons but i think everyone knows what i mean without getting into too much detail about that so when talking about playing gaming events when we're dealing with something like pandemic like uh first off be even more forgiving of people canceling right uh people are dealing with a lot right now uh things are not normal and not everyone is coping with that well people are dealing with kids at home or kids going to school becoming potential plague bearers uh working from home or working at work but in the weird new environment with new restrictions and face shields and all then staying away from each other and not sharing the microwave um you're you're uh, many people are dealing with loss of income um in in general just loss of regularity loss of of normality while gaming can be a great escape from all of this and self-care is very important hobbies though should take an even lower level of importance over other things I had, we had a, we had a person cancel. We, we had to reschedule a, a, a game on Saturday this last Saturday because the person uh, had fallen while they were shoveling from the blizzard Oof. that hit their town. Um, and they were just too sore even to sit down and enjoy a game at the computer. So, yeah. I mean, th- these things happen, right? It's no matter what you're going to do, things will happen. Yeah. And like I said, with, with, it, with things right now, if someone's excuse is I just couldn't, I would accept that fully right now. Like there's just so much going on. Now, most of what we said above is going to still be completely true for gaming at, in tough times in during a pandemic. Um, you still want consistency, right? You still, if you you still want to gear game group together. Yes, okay, maybe for the first little while things kind of fell apart and we had to get used to the new normal, whatever you want to call it. But if you want to reestablish that group. You need to get that consistency back. You need to make it a steady game night. You need to set a time. You need to set a place. That place, whether that's we're going to get together on Zoom or we're going to meet up on Facebook chat or we're going to whatever it happens to be where you are. Maybe you can get together physically and play social distance games as long as you got games. Again, don't share components and stuff like that. Again, we got a whole podcast recommending games you could play six meters apart or two meters apart, six feet apart. If that's it, if it is getting together in public, uh, maybe outdoors is safer supposedly than indoors. Uh, If you're in Ontario right now, don't do that. This is all bad. You're not allowed to get together. (laughs) But whatever that is, set the consistency, right? Set the rules. And here's something we did miss earlier. You should have a backup plan. So if game nights at Moe's, 9 o'clock every Monday, and Moe's the one that has to cancel, there should be a backup plan. This is something that Jeff Seuss brought up in our a previous conversation about game night scheduling, um, where, where they have that set up. It's we rotate GMs and we write, play at the GM's home. But if one of the GMs isn't available, it's the next GM's in line's responsibility to take over the game. Like that's actually another thing that will keep people attending, right? So that there isn't the, oh, Mo canceled, well, we don't play. And now as soon as you miss one week, that it seems to uh, going along with the once one person cancels, everyone cancels. Well, as soon as you miss one week, all of a sudden it becomes, well, we missed last week. I can miss this week too. Right. So again, consistency, just as important, if not more important nowadays. Um, again, we could do a better job on this. Now, I don't know your math game. Is that have a set? We do. We have, we have yeah. two, two nights a week, four hour, four hour sessions are booked. Um, and, and, Generally, we've we've had you know aside from oh there was a blizzard and I threw my back out yeah um, we've 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 been good and, and stick to it um, the big thing for us is what Discord has allowed when it comes to the next port thing we're going to talk about which is pre planning um, mm-hmm. because we've got a server dedicated to our game um, and there's only five people on it uh, we've set up channels and and it's you know there's only five people but we still have ten channels wow. uh, because we've broken things up and you know images can all go into one spot and memes can all get buried Mm -hmm. somewhere else. If you don't, you don't want to see the meme, that's great. But if you want to be keep track of that conversation, it hasn't been filled up by this week's funny memes because those are somewhere else. Um, And then, you know, I've even got separate RP channels for when we split the party. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to split the party, you want to be able to keep track of things. And uh, if, if the players want to not metagame, they can just not look in that channel and see what's Mm -hmm. happening uh, you know, with the other parties or if they're, you know, if they're comfortable, they can, that's, that, that's fine. Um, we aren't, we aren't doing things in private. We are just doing things separately. Um, 
as as you would at a table, uh, but right. with a you know a, a, a slightly more digital firewall uh, between. Right. So yeah, do the the pre planning's just as important, right? Again, what game are we playing? When are we playing? Who's bringing the game? Who's going to be the one to set up the game and put their camera on it so everyone else can see it? Who's going to have you all downloaded Tabletop Simulator yet? Uh, do you have the Steam copy so we can all play together? All of that. Um, setting expectations just as important. Though those expectations should be lower, right? Everyone's dealing with a lot of crap right now. So maybe don't it be, you know, hardcore right now. You have to be there at nine and we're going to play at nine and we're going to play till 12 and you better be focused on the game the whole time. You know what? Uh, you're going to, kids are going to come in. You're, you're playing on Zoom. You're going to get distracted. The phone's going to ring. There's going to be an emergency, whatever. I think personally, lower your expectations a bit, at least for now, until things return to normal. Now, though you are playing online in general, um, you could still get together before or after the game, right? So again, the instead of the hard and fast, maybe you, you get together before and you all grab your Keurig and you make a coffee and you talk about your different coffees and what you're doing, like we do on this show, on this podcast, for anyone who joins us live on Twitch has seen it. The first half hour of the show is me and Sean kind of chit-chatting and interacting with the chat before we get going right just something like hey what have you been up to i don't see sean every day we talk a lot online but i don't know what's been up with him and i tell i tell him how crappy my day's been he talks about how lousy his work week's been uh we hint at play testing we're doing for certain publishing companies and whatever right put, put that in like make that part of your event right um do a Netflix Netflix watch party, right? Uh, this is something with the Misdirect and Mark podcast been doing. They have their podcast and then they all go and they watch Deep Space Nine together, right? And now they're going to start playing Star Trek Adventures, the role-playing game. So their plan is to do that before doing the watch party, which I just think sounds awesome. I'm like, we're going to play some Star Trek and then we're going to sit and we're going to have a chat watch party and watch some Star Trek. I think that's awesome. The thing is, remember, there's a social thing, right? The game is important, but it's meant to be a hobby. You play with friends and you have fun with friends. Absolutely. Uh, you know, again, we, we jump, we get together, you know, if, if our game is going to go from eight till midnight, we start at seven and, and chat and, and, and gab and, and do whatever. And, uh, afterwards, you know, we do the stars and wishes and stuff yep. for, you know, another half an hour after, after the game to, to cool down afterwards. So one of the things you do have to watch for when playing online are these are things unique, stuff that doesn't come up during game night that can impact everyone's fun, right? So tech issues. Uh, you, Anyone who joined us again live during our pre-show got to see me playing with my dang camera yet again, um, trying to get it so that my camera looked good before we started going. Uh, just getting Zoom to boot. Uh, there was two Windows updates and an Adobe update and a Zoom update that I ran before going online tonight. Now, hadn't I done that, Adobe right now might have just interrupted our podcast because it's decided now was a good time to update. I, uh, internet connectivity issues um any any tech issues it could be any monitor goes out whatever mouse battery dies expect all this yep uh the other thing is logins uh if you are going to be playing at bga and uh, make sure that you've got your bga login you know your login or you've already registered or if you're doing tabletopia that you've already you know the day before you go in and you make sure that your log you know your password and your your login mm -hmm. name and username so that you're not messing around with that before you know at, at eight o'clock yeah. when the game is supposed to start uh you that tech issues like and logins and and digital stuff like that are your responsibility to handle in advance uh patches this is one um we I, not everyone knows this but um we actually try to play an MMO every Thursday night. We were streaming it, but no one watched, so we stopped. <laughs> but we play an MMO every Thursday night, and it's always lousy when you sit down at 9 a.m. Thursday when we're all about to get together and you open up the game and it's got a patch, right? That's something we should be doing a week ahead of time. And yes, I think all four of us have been guilty at least once of not doing it. Uh, the most egregious is Deanna's just because her laptop takes forever to patch. Well, at I least mean, the I rest think, of us, it's pretty quick. Well, I think the most egregious was when I tried well, to patch one night. Your whole thing. And yeah. And I had to completely uninstall and reinstall. I mean, I lost the yeah. night because it it stopped ever patching. <laughs> yeah, again. that was weird. Um, and so, but I mean, if I'd started that at noon, I would have known been okay. before. <laughs> I, I would have yeah. at least known before nine o'clock when we were supposed to start that yeah. we were going to have a problem. 
Yeah, we, we try to walk the walk, but sometimes <laughs> we sometimes forget. Uh, you're also going to have to deal with interruptions, right? Uh, most of us are home with our kids that we're not used to. Pets, uh, uh, whatever, family coming in, doorbells, Amazon packages being delivered. Expect interruptions. Uh, don't get upset if someone's got to go deal with something else, whatever that happens to be. Uh, lag can be a problem. Uh, everyone in our chat room is well aware of just how far behind the chat can be compared to where we're actually talking, which is why we've gotten way better at not just going, hey, chat, answer this question. And then Sean and I sit here for five minutes while we wait for the chat to catch up into what we're saying and then finally reply. And it ends up that we already read the reply. Uh, lag can be an issue. Um, a big one for people who aren't used to doing video chat, uh, which you can see a lot of is if you watch episode one to five of the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on YouTube, is getting used to um, the lack of social cues and the lag when doing video chat, or even worse, text. And you end up talking on top of each other and you interrupt each other and someone doesn't get to talk at all because everyone else keeps talking. You can't tell they want to say something. All those visual and social cues that we deal with in real life pretty much subconsciously, for some reason, our brains don't tend to get it as well digitally, chat. especially if you got a big group. With two of us, it's not that bad, but you get four or five people in a Zoom chat room together and oh my God. I feel sorry for everyone, every teacher in Ontario right now. Uh, and, and text chat is actually almost worse um, because, well, if everyone's trying to talk at once on video, you can't understand anything. It's all garbage. But yeah. if everyone is trying to type at the same time, everything will come through, but the faster typers will come through first. And all of a sudden, the person who's been really excitedly working on a big post, you know, in, whether it's an RPG game or a, a big thing that they, you know, want to explain to somebody, it gets not, you know, it's now no longer relevant because mm -hmm. everyone else has been chatting faster and moved on. Um, and so, you know, Discord and uh, messages and other, other tools often have that I'm typing now warning. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important thing to pay attention to because maybe person X is, is a slow typer. Uh, don't, just zoom ahead past them, wait for them to go. And, uh, you know, as a DM, that's something I'm trying to be really uh, cognizant of. You know, I've got three or four players in front of me. After I make a post, if the first person responds and they've given me something I can play, bounce back with, I don't. I need to bite back, sit back, and wait mm -hmm. until everyone has had a chance to respond. And then maybe I'm still going to respond to that first person, but I've got better context because at the table, mm -hmm. everyone would have said, you know, in turn would have said, oh, this, this, this. Okay, great. Uh, whereas in text, maybe it's this, then this. Oh, okay, over there. Okay, great. Now we can go. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I tried running a Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game online many, many years ago on a BBS. <laughs> and that was the biggest problem is like, I'd be like three steps into a combat and then someone would be responding to the first thing. And it just, they wrote a long descriptive post that showed up. But by then we've already like that beastman's dead. Like, <laughs> well, how do I don't even know how to react to this. Yeah, yeah, that is not easy. I think the main thing though, is just be aware that there are tech issues that playing online over zoom however you're doing it skype voice chat text is different than in person and be patient and forgiving of, of all people don't get impatient don't get frustrated realize that not everyone has the same level of technical expertise not everyone has the same level of technology not everyone has not everyone has a smartphone not everyone is using the same tech maybe the per gamer you're playing with is at a library using like a super slow modem to play yeah. All right. Let's wrap up with some ways to actually game online. So you've got people, you got a game group, you're ready, you're going to do it. You found a time. You're like, all right, we're playing nine till noon, nine till noon. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's oh, it's early morning or it's a really long game. I'm not sure which. <laughs> you're playing nine till midnight or whatever. Nine till midnight, Saturday nights. Where are you going to do it? Right. What, 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 are, how are you going to play these games? So a lot of this is going to be based on what do you want to play? What are you playing, right? So depending on what type of game you want to play is going to send you to different places. So the most basic bare bones way to do it is using some type of video conferencing software, right? So using Zoom or Skype are probably the most popular right now. There's tons more out there. Is it a matter of you're just going to sit and chat? 
Are you going to play a card game where you have a single deck of cards and I'm going to hold up your card and you're going to hold up mine? You're going to play medium where I literally can't see your camera. I have my camera. We put the cards down. Are we going to have a Gloomhaven board set up with a webcam pointing at it with um, a letters a b c d and one two three on the hex grid so we can go i move from b6 to d12 what are you doing right you got to figure that out so you got zoom skype video chat uh bare bones right it'll work but doesn't really do anything to help you next you've got um what virtual conference rooms right our virtual chat rooms whatever you want to call them your discord your slack and again there's many more but those are the two most popular that i know of um irc was basically this back in the day um i'm i'm also reminded of the old aol rooms any, any, any place you've got real-time interactive chat yeah. you know enter post not send uh you know mm -hmm. sending messages on the email style that, that real-time interactive posting so those are great for different style of games, right? Um, this one, I've seen people playing games like Gloomhaven where they take a picture of the board every round. Everyone writes in what they want to do. They, they, they send in pictures. Here's my hand. And they take a picture with their phone and they put it into their Slack channel showing here are my two cards. I move from this square to this square and you just take pictures every round. It's not optimum, but it works. Where those do shine is, as Sean's been talking about, he's been running a whole game of mass on Discord and it's worked great. Yep. both for generating excitement and running the game. Then you have the next level, in my opinion. Actually, I think I'm going to jump down one. Uh, Roll20 and other RPG tools. So these are basically your Slack, your Discord with some type of board, some type of, of, of whiteboard that you can put on maps or dungeons or a grid or... And depending on the software, it's going to do way more for you. Like Roll20 can do stuff like Fog of War and calculate your arrows and check your ranges and all kinds of funky stuff. Or it can just be a whiteboard where you scribble on it like we did when we played um, Runaway Hirelings. But, they, but the, the key is it is, tool, it is a tool chest alongside uh, video the and chat. or text chats, right? So they, it, it is a, 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 a kit prepared for you of, of tools often customizable uh, in order to enhance your gameplay, whatever that gameplay may be. Yeah. And then similarly, you have the virtual tabletops for board games, um, which actually some people are using these for RPGs too, usually miniature heavy RPGs. But you've got, again, your big two are Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia right now. Um, there are, again, others out there, but those are the most well-known. Uh, Tabletopia just runs in a web browser, whereas Tabletop Simulator, you have to download. Uh, Tabletopia is free, sort of. Tabletop Simulator, you got to pay for, and then maybe pay for games or maybe not. Um, what these two do is, in general, provide you a virtual reality game room. You have your table, you have the game, you have the box, you have all the components, and it's up to you to manipulate them. Now, some people have put additional work especially on Tabletop Simulator, to automate parts of it. All of them are designed for board games in general. So you have basic abilities like rolling dice and drawing cards and randomizing things. But basically, it's just a big virtual reality. It is the same. There's setup time. You still have to unbox the game and open it and put the components out sometimes. And the, thankfully, there's no cleanup, but there might be setup and giving all the players pieces. Most of the good tabletop simulator mods at least do the first round, like your setup. But like you can put the cards wherever you want. You can flip the table. You can throw meeple at each other. You don't have to play the game. It requires a level of commitment by the people playing to actually play so that does require a, i guess a level of maturity when, when playing games there right next would be the next step which to me would be playing games digitally so these are fully they're video games they're video game versions of physical games uh, again you're gonna have you, you have your role-playing games so there are your neverwinter nights and there are various ways to play dungeons and dragons there's pathfinder online there is a pathfinder uh game that i don't know how i, I know there's a digital pathfinder but i know nothing about it um but i know it exists i know there are various world of darkness games i don't know how involved they are but then there's the simpler side of things with web-based gaming right like so board game arena yukata botaju uh we have again a whole podcast episode talking about those and comparing them what the difference is here is the game plays itself like like you you it it forces you to follow the rules of the game it's it does all the background work you can't cheat you can't throw meeple at each other you just have a digital version of your game and then the next version would be going to steam and buying the asmodee version yep. of 
terraforming Mars or or whatever Asmodee bundle is available at Humble Bundle this month. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and and connecting through the online Asmodee system mm-hmm. in order to play that together. And now what that will give you is often a more polished version yeah. of the game, uh, less bare bones, um, often better graphics, sometimes better play, sometimes not, actually. Um, yeah. It does depend from time to time. Yeah, some games definitely. Uh, the the some games I played, I'll only play virtual now, like uh, digital. Other games, I'll never play the virtual version again. And it's interesting. The average uh, might play virtual now and then. Like Terraforming Mars, I definitely prefer playing in person. But when I can't play in person, it's nice to have that option. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, I've I've played Roll for the Galaxy on. Uh, BGA a number of times and it was really enjoyable once I figured out what the heck I was doing <laughs> um, and then I got a chance to uh, beta test the Roll for the Galaxy app the actual official Steam oh, app yeah. and, and I much prefer playing it on BGA um, oh, wow. I've un- I uninstalled it it's, it's in my Steam mm-hmm. library and I've never installed it again because if I'm going to play I'd rather play it on BGA no, there's definitely like BGAs really impresses me overall. We we've we've given them enough credit, I think. Uh, they really should be paying us something. They, or at least give us free a, yeah. lifetime subscriptions. They had an interesting uh glitch this morning uh that I mentioned to you on chat. Yeah. Uh they have been so busy this year that they actually had a glitch caused by the fact that their number of actual gameplays exceeded to to the 32. So they, they broke the integer bound, the upper mm-hmm. upper bound on their counter for how many games they had played uh, because they never expected to make it to 4.2 million games nope. played. <laughs> that's, a, that's a programming mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a pretty quick fix, but man, I bet you that was hard to figure out what happened. Well, yeah, I mean, it's an easy fix. It's a really easy fix, yeah. but uh, it's one of those things where you throw that in there. It's like, oh, no one's ever going to play 4.2 million games yeah. on our thing. And then you have a pandemic. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I need to change my variable from an integer to an array, but knowing that that was the problem, I, yeah. I can just imagine the people in the background trying to figure <laughs> out what went wrong. Uh, and then, so there's one final thing, and this is kind of an outstanding thing that I added in here, and this is the very specialty tools, uh, where you get something like Vorpal Board, which was a Kickstarter uh, a couple of years ago that is a specific web-based interface and 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 device to enable people to uh, to help people play digital uh, video games. So if you have a board game and one person has the board game, uh, Vorpal board was designed so that other people could play with that person uh, remotely. Oh, okay. um, and so it's got, you know, a, a specific kind of webcam arm to help position your, your web, your phone over the board in the mm-hmm. best way possible. And, and, and it does a, a bunch of different little tricks and things. Um, uh, and and it's just sort of uh, again a specialty way to play physical board games remotely with people. Uh, and there's a couple of things like that out there. Other than that, but that's yeah. I've seen of. I've seen a few interesting ones people have been using. So one of the things uh, we did miss earlier that I think is a good one. This is mainly used for RPGs, but could be used for anything with a campaign game. Is wikis. Uh, wikis for your campaign are a great way to keep players engaged between sessions. I have seen people set up wikis for board game groups as well to set up stuff like what are we playing next week? And one of the things I've seen that used for that I thought was awesome is someone had set one up where they were able to import their board game geek collection. So there was a way to see what games are in your local gaming community. So if you have a game group that say meets together at the CG realm, one of our our great local game stores here in Windsor, well, every member that shows up the CG realm could log into this and then click in and connect their, 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 their board game geek list. So then you could go in and it was searchable. So you're like, I want to play through the ages. And it's like, well, Sean has through the ages. So now I can reach out to Sean and say, Hey, Sean, are you going next Saturday? Can you bring through the ages? I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was really well done, but mostly people use wikis for their campaigns, right? Cause yeah. the whole thing with the wikis, you have multiple sections and multiple pages and basically the way Sean's divided everything up on discord, but then it goes up on the web for everyone to use. Uh, and actually I, I use a specialty wiki for RPG, uh, world anvil which yep. is for writers uh or rpg groups um uh, and so i've got different ca- you know characters have their own pages there and locations go. locations within the city have their own pages uh on world anvil which i need to update which reminds me <laughs> <laughs> but that's another good way to keep people involved especially if you can get players who are willing to do stuff like put in their own player notes or do things like journaling um another way that 
you can keep players engaged is getting them to log their plays on um i, I forget i never did pay for that app that you use and i can't oh, remember what it yeah uh, BG, yeah we haven't played BG stats i haven't yeah played. bg stats BG or stats. uh board, board game or, or going on board game geek and logging your plays and interacting about them right like so tweeting them so that you can see oh sean played this on wednesday or i'm looking forward to play that so that's just again a way to extend the game night past game night absolutely well i think that's going to be it for our main thoughts on maintaining a game group we're going to head over to the lobby and see if anyone in the chat room has anything to add Uh, all right you fine folk in the chat room what do you got do you have additional tips and tricks what do you do to keep your game group going now in general what do you do on a normal you know saturday to monday sunday i guess also exists (laughs) Um, and what have you done uh during covid have you have you were you able to maintain a game group as things have gone on i would say no for us like like to, to make it personal our game groups have fallen apart we have none um we've gotten together and played a couple games um me and sean and then we keep playing stuff on board game arena but i don't really think of that as a game group my monday night group i don't think i've talked to one of the players since the last time we got together like i i assume tom barker's still alive and out there somewhere <laughs> but i honestly haven't talked to him he doesn't really play like go on facebook or anything um the rest of them i keep in touch on facebook we have share memes now and then um Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, I still interact with regularly, and we do play Star Wars with, so I've kind of kept in touch with him, but like my Monday night group that I used to talk about back in 2019 and before, (laughs) gone really, like they're still out there somewhere doing things, but we're definitely not gaming together. Uh, Tech mentions uh, when he was in Ottawa, he went to a game night uh, with Ryan, and there must have been 50 people taking over a whole Boston pizza. Oh, that um, Ottawa game group, the, the group that organizes that posts on board game geek. And I see it. It's always at Boston pizza and it looks awesome. I would have loved to have gotten Windsor to that point, but we never quite got big enough to like go to a restaurant. Right. And I'm sorry. I don't know who, what it is about Windsor gamers, but they refuse to buy food. Whenever we did have events at restaurants, it was really hard to get people to support the venue. So I, that would be my problem with going to Boston pizza. Like you need to have, a big enough portion of those 50 people who will buy stuff to make it worthwhile for the restaurant. And right. when we did do a couple things at restaurants here in Windsor, it didn't go so great. At the, it depended though. Like there were other, like when we used to have events at the Kildare house upstairs, those went well, but that was a very different group of gamers than the people who show up at say the CG realm or even the people who shows up at the green beam. But that, yeah. that is one of the problems with getting together at like, like at a restaurant or something like that uh what else have we got here um and she games is pointing out that she thinks it's even more important to figure out what you're playing ahead of time in the digital pandemic world because no one wants to play a rousing game of let's all download this or let's all go make an account of uh at why uh you know when you're sitting down to play no totally fair yeah, have being prepared, having have do the patching, do the download the game, make sure you have an account. Does everyone have a copy? Is definitely very important. Well, hmm. I don't see a lot going on in the chat. Either we covered it really well, or <laughs> we put everyone to a sleep, or there's no one actually in there. No, I can tell there's people <laughs> in there. Um, or they're liking so bad they don't even realize we're asking. <laughs> it could could be any or all. It could of the be above. any or the above. That's all good though. I, I'm gonna go with we 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 were very thorough this time, there we and go. we covered all bases. I, th- I think we did a good job on this topic, and that's why the chat room has nothing. And none of them are gaming. They're they're all stuck in our same boat. I, I know that all tech does is win new games. He, exactly. He doesn't, he he's doesn't got actually a, play the a games huge collection of games that have got. They're still in shrink because yeah, he's are, got no one to play with. Still in shrink even though I, I know his daughter plays games with him, but I, I know Jeff, if he was in the chats had like now playing more than ever, he has talked about that in our discord. I was kind of hoping he'd be in there tonight. And basically what happened with him is he made this switch to digital gaming for his role-playing groups and found out that that was actually freeing that like there was less prep work and he didn't have to worry about food and coffee and getting together and driving or going to someone's house or whose turn it was to do what you just all logged on at the right time and played. And he's been doing all his stuff, I think, through Discord uh, with voice and chat. So I, I, there are people in Windsor who are definitely still getting their game on. I, I, we haven't been doing so great. But that's all right. All right. 
Remember, if you got a game or game night question for us, all you got to do is head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop. 